Einstein was wrong again about quantum mechanics because of something that physicists measured at MIT. Maybe you've seen the headlines last week. They go back to a press release. As you know, I'm a great defender of Albert Einstein, who didn't say half the shit people say he did. So let's have a look. Before we get to the science news, I have a recommendation for how you can recall all the science news you've been watching. It's a tool called Recall, and they've sponsored this video. I'm happy to tell you about them because for me, it solved a problem. Recall helps you store and organize everything you've read, watched, or written. It takes all your notes and creates an AI-powered knowledge base from that. Recall has a browser extension from which you can add content and that also allows you to get summaries of videos or websites. You can also import bookmarks or note files from other apps, which is what I've done. This works with YouTube videos and shorts, Spotify and Apple Podcasts, PDFs, Google Docs, Slides, websites, blogs, articles, even TikToks and Vimeo. It also comes with a a mobile app. In August, Recall will launch a new chat feature. This lets you have an AI conversation about your own saved content. Instead of searching through your notes, just ask a question and get instant answers with references. So if you want to remember everything you've ever studied, read or thought, give it a try at getrecall.ai. If you use my code Zabine25, you'll get 25% off until September 1st. And now back to the science news. This recent episode of Einstein was wrong was brought to you by the famous Bohr-Einstein debate at the 1927 Solvay conference. Einstein was convinced that something was fishy about quantum mechanics and he'd been trying to poke holes into it for some while. If he were alive today, he'd probably be running a YouTube channel called Quantum Nonsense Debunked. In this case, he didn't believe that the properties of particles can just not be determined. By this I mean that in quantum physics, a particle that has a definite position just doesn't have a definite momentum. But in 1927, Einstein argued that this isn't right. For that, he used a thought experiment that's a variant of the double slit experiment. Imagine you send photons, the quanta of light, through a plate with two small slits, that's the double slit. You'll see an interference pattern, but only so long as you don't know which slit the particle went through, according to quantum mechanics. Nonsense, Einstein said. I could put a tiny measurement device with the spring on the slit and measure the recoil. That wouldn't do anything to the photon, so now we see an interference pattern and know where the photon went. Quantum physics is wrong. Well, Bohr said, but the recoil of the photon's too small to measure, so you can't distinguish before and after the recoil, and the interference pattern remains. And at the time, that was really all there was to say, because in reality, no one could measure the recoil of a single photon on a double slit until the guys from MIT did their experiment. In their experiment, the double slit isn't a double slit, but it's a grid that causes interference between photons. The grid they use is a cloud of atoms, about 30,000 lithium atoms, if you want to know precisely. So if you're missing a few atoms, now you know where they went. These atoms are cooled to near absolute zero and trapped in a regular lattice with electromagnetic fields. They sit there much like well, atoms in a lattice, but they're kept in place not by van der Waals forces like in crystals, and not because they're watching TikTok either, but by the electromagnetic fields in the trap. So unlike in crystals, you can turn off the trap. They then shine on the atom lattice with a laser in the red part of the visible spectrum, and they measure how the light scatters. If the atoms are neatly bound in their traps, you see the interference pattern. Then they turn off the trap so that the atoms are no longer bound to their location. What do you think will happen? If Einstein was right, then in my interpretation, the answer would be nothing. One would still see the interference because he thought that the interference would be there anyway. So what do they see? In this figure, loosely speaking, the lower the point on the vertical axis, the more interference. If they turn off the trap, what happens is 
nothing. The interference is still there. At least initially, after turning off the chap, nothing happens. But then, if one waits for a while, the interference pattern does disappear. This is what they interpret as Einstein being wrong, because they say the reason that the interference pattern disappears is that when the atoms are no longer bound to their places, then their wave functions begin to run apart. Then the atoms can catch more information about where the photon was, and because of that, the interference disappears. So. Einstein was wrong because the experiment shows that the more you know about where the photon was, the less it interferes. It's a neat experiment and it gets a 0 out of 10 on my bullshit meter. However, I find the interpretation highly questionable. Because remember, they don't measure what the atoms do directly. They only measure what the photons do and infer from that what the atoms must have done. This means they use the disappearance of interference to conclude that the atoms in some sense measured where the photon was. It's not that I doubt it's correct, but it's a circular argument. It's logically wrong. And I think Einstein would have predicted that if one turns off the lattice, then the recoil on the atoms means that the lattice becomes increasingly less regular. And this is why the interference pattern vanishes. So was Einstein wrong or not? He both was and he wasn't. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.